morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. So let us keep rejoicing in the resurrection of our Savior. Uh, today we worship him with divine service setting four. Uh, just the one thing to note is uh, the Kyrie for today uh, is the longer version. It's not in the hymnal, if you follow along. Um, Ellen and I will go back and forth chanting the different petitions for the Kyrie, uh, but the congregation is all the same response. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. But each of the petitions are on the screen uh, to follow along with as well to see what we are praying to our Lord about. As we begin praising our risen Savior this day with our opening hymn with high delight, let us unite. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept the record of sin, the Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the risen body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our worthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned and thought word in you, and that we cannot free ourselves from our own sinful condition. Together as his people, let's take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, 
and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie. <clears throat> In peace, let us pray to the Lord. church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel, the calling of all the faith, let us pray to the Lord. seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Let us pray. O oh God, in the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people rescue from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness, and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading for the third Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 2. And this is part of Peter's sermon that he gave. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. For those who received his word were baptized, and they were added that day about 3,000 souls. This is the word of our Lord. The epistle for today is from 1 Peter chapter 1. If you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of the grass. Grass withers, and the flower falls. But the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of our Lord. We rise for the Alleluia verse in the Gospel reading. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Lord, Lord. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, <clears throat> Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. And one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some woman of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. 
And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. <clears throat> so they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were, he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise and I'll confess our faith together through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May be seated as we join in praising our risen Lord. We speak, O Lord, your servant listens.
grace, mercy, and peace be to all from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and our helper of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last consideration, this third Sunday of Easter comes from uh, 1 Peter, still in chapter 1. In the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, your people, God. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And it uh, kind of seems like uh, spring around here, except for uh, today. I mean, the buds are emerging. We got a lilac tree. The buds are starting to come out. The tulips and other flowers were, were blooming. And vegetables that were in greenhouses are starting to come through the, the ground. <clears throat> and spring, it's a wonderful time. It's God knew what he was doing when he chose Easter to be part of spring because there's joy and hope and renewal in springtime. And color starts coming back again, and it's wonderful. But it's also a scary thought in how just everything can change in an instant. I mean, plants are fragile. Well, yeah, some are hardier than others. It doesn't take much to kill or injure them. But I had an inch of snow this morning on the car when we, when we left in the coldness today. But then during the summer, you know, it can hail, that can damage the crops, heat and drought dry them up, and bugs and disease cause them to wither. And I really admire farming, it's not just because I like John Deere, but the farmers, they know how fragile crops are, and yet they plan trusting that everything will go well at the harvest at the end of the season. Well, the fragileness of plant life is just simply a reflection of real life. We all humans, we're a hardy bunch. Yeah, broken bones can be mended. Hearts can be full-on organs, and our body can now be replaced completely. Medicines can cure certain diseases. But we humans are also quite fragile. It doesn't take much for us to fall and break something. A small accident leaves someone crippled. Microscopic virus that we can't even see causes the young and old, the healthy and sick to all perish. Now, as Peter wrote this morning, all flesh is like grass and all its glory like the flowers of the grass. Grass withers and the flowers fall. Fragileness is just a fact of life. For that matter, even things like rocks and steel end up decaying and falling apart. See, in the end, nothing, nothing on this earth lasts forever. And if that's true, that everything perishes, including our own lives, everything dies eventually, then what does that mean for us? What does it mean for our existence and our lives here and now? Well, that's where many people out there see this fragileness as a license for them to go do and say and be whatever they want to do. Isaiah described their attitude as they're the ones that say, oh, let us eat and drink and be merry for tomorrow we're just going to die, so we're going to do whatever we want. If life is just going to end whenever and we can't control it, well, it doesn't matter what we do or don't do. It makes no difference in the long run. And yeah, well, most people do have a moral compass that they're not going to go out there and do some serious crime like murder. Many still think, well, if I'm not going to hurt somebody by doing this, well, it doesn't matter. And if you think your choices only affect you, then it doesn't matter at all what you do or don't do. Well, that's what Peter's talking about this morning when he addressed the congregation, but also us. When he says that the futile ways you have inherited from your forefathers, and let me tell you, nothing has changed since the Israelites and even since Adam and Eve. The same things that happened then in the beginning, same things that are happening today thousands of years later. <clears throat> and there's another way of thinking about the fragileness of life, and that's being constantly afraid. That if everything is perishable, well, what's going to happen to me? Now, I'm not saying that fear isn't legitimate. If someone's afraid, that's okay. And there is a long list of the fears that are out there. And you might have a fear of a loved one getting sick and dying, or even a fear of yourself getting sick. No. Fear can be reasonable. But fear is not reasonable when it leads to despair. See, despair is being that you don't see any hope. There's no future. You expect the worst. There's nothing better that's going to come at all. That's when you despair from being afraid. And the reason we despair is because we hold on to these things so much that are here today and will be gone tomorrow. So despair or living as if nothing else matters are futile things. And when you're focused on money or health or worrying about other things, 
in the future. You're holding on to those perishable things that will be gone tomorrow. The thing is, God has called us out of that futile way of thinking. And he's brought us into a new way of thinking. A way that trusts him. That trusts his me. That trusts him for permanency. A way that doesn't fall into despair or meaningless. But a way that looks to his word and looks to him for all things. Because this up here are the things that are imperishable, the things that will never, ever, ever perish. Peter said, all flesh is like grass and all the glory is like the flowers of the grass. Grass withers, flowers fall. But the word of God will last forever. See, God's word is the only thing, the only truth we have in this life that we can rely on. So when people are sick or dying, Go to God's word and rely on the truth. When we're afraid or despairing, go to God's word and rely on him. When you feel like there is no hope or no goodness out there, go to God's word and rely on him. It's the only thing that gets us through this life. And it's the only thing that gets us into the eternal life that is to come. Because it's the only thing that fills us with true joy, eternal joy, and hope now for the future. See, Peter said, you're born again. You're brought into God's family. Not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, the living and abiding word of God. <clears throat> God planted the seed of faith in you. God has grown that seed of faith in you. He has given you the spirit to lead you to live with trust and confidence in his promises throughout your days, throughout whatever you're going through. Because <laughs> in the word, in God's holy word, he has given us a solemn oath that we can trust him in all things. Because the living and abiding word of God is our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Because alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And a risen Savior says, whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. When you call to me, I will answer you. I will be with you in trouble. I will rescue you, and I will honor you. That's what David could say. And God, I trust, I will not be afraid. What can matter? What can anything for that matter do to me? And through faith, we can respond nothing. Absolutely nothing can be done to me. God's promises are true for us. We know they're true. Because Jesus rose from the dead and proclaimed that they're true. He proclaimed that peace is ours now and peace is ours for eternity. Where he now sits at the right hand of the Heavenly Father to, yes, rule and reign over everything. There are moments when it don't seem like he is here, but he is. With us every moment of life, waking, sleeping, goodness, and health richer for poor. And here this morning, he's with us in the word, the word, and in the sacrament. What a blessing it is to receive the true living and abiding word of God. And it's eternal because it was signed, it's an oath signed in the blood of Jesus Christ. The holy, imperishable blood of Jesus that's more valuable than any gold or silver or anything else out there. The blood that has redeemed you and preserved you by being shed on the cross for you. The blood that forgives you all your sins, your sins of doubt and of living only for yourself. The blood that redeems you from the sin of not seeing what the true meaning of life is out there for Jesus Christ. The sin of, yes, even saying, oh, I will eat and drink and be merry for tomorrow. His blood redeems you from the sin of despairing of this life, of losing faith and trust in him in those moments we have. That when life does seem meaningless, it's not. Look to the cross to look to Christ. Because there, he gave up his life to give you meaning. He gave you everything of himself so you can have everything. 
Because you are his meaning. Before even the foundations of the world, you were his meaning for him to come here to die and rise for you. He is the word of God that has created you, that has redeemed you, and is sustaining you into the eternal life so you can be with him forever. This is your hope. Because yes, everything else out there will perish. Everything in here will perish except for the word of God and his holy body and blood. This word is the promise of God. The promise that our Savior has fulfilled and kept for you. The word, the spoken and living word of God who is amongst us, who died for us, who rose for us to save us. And so we could actually have something real to put our trust and hope into. Not something temporary, not something fleeting, but something eternal, something imperishable, something that you could always look to for help. Even when things around you are perishing and falling apart. Because the word of God endures forever. Amen. Now may the resurrection treasures of God our Father guard your hearts, your mind, your whole being in our risen Savior Jesus Christ as he fills you with the Holy Spirit to continue relishing in, in the true word of God that lasts forever. Amen. We rise now as we continue with the prayers of God's holy church. Let us pray to our Father in Heaven for this day, for St. Michael Lutheran Church of Richfield, for our nation and those who serve, those who need healing, those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, those coming to the Lord's table, and for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O well, Father of the risen Christ, in your Son's appearance to the Emmaus disciples, he expounded the scriptures and revealed himself in the breaking of the bread. Enlighten us by the resurrection light that never fades, that our hearts may burn in faith toward you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O Father of the risen Christ, your spirit opens the holy scriptures to the hearts of your people. Bless St. Michael Lutheran Church of Richville, its mission and its people, its leaders, and its pastor, giving them the ability to meet the needs that arise as they do the work you've given them to do in proclaiming the saving truth of your word. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> well, Father of the risen Christ, stifle the powers of darkness and end the reign of war, violence, and terror. Raise up leaders who will seek peace and work for the common good. Instill in them godly wisdom, common sense, and love of righteousness, and guide them in the pursuit of justice for all. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Well, Father of the risen Christ, those who suffer cry to you. Hear them and answer them with grace sufficient for all their needs. Heal the sick according to your will, comfort the wounded, and give your peace to the dying, especially to all who have requested our prayers, including those in our bulletin. We praise you for a thankful surgery and uh, for Eunice Philman, who is home recovering. We pray for the surgeries coming up for David uh, Kaltenbach and for Deb Gager, and for all those who are going to have surgeries and those recovering from surgeries. We pray for all those who have been diagnosed with cancer and those still recovering from cancer and all those whom we lift before you in our hearts now. You are our help and strength for this life and eternal life to come. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O Father of the risen Christ, you have poured out your spirit upon us, that we might believe your truth and raise our sons and daughters in it. Bless the families of our congregation and those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, including you and this film, that as they celebrate another year of life and marriage, you continue to watch over them, providing for all their needs and granting them joyful celebrations. Grant them another year of life and marriage to come if it be your will, so they may continue to cherish, grow, and abide in your love and saving grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O Father of the risen Christ, your compassion is made known to us through your Son's breaking of the bread. Open our hearts and mouths to receive your forgiveness in the body and blood of Jesus Christ, 
and grant us grace that we may perceive him as our Savior through his word, and rejoice to receive him as the bread of life for the salvation of our souls. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Well, Father of the risen Christ, have mercy on us when we are foolish and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken about your Son. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us through the preaching of the gospel, that the scriptures might be open to us. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our risen Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. We join singing the common doxology. Almighty God, as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of your Son, bless us with these resurrection treasures, and we go on and continue to proclaim the good news to all your people, that you give us your word and your sacrament to strengthen and uplift us so we can live for all eternity. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is truly good, right, and salutary. We should at all times and in all places, no matter who we are with, giving thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, our Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all of your creation. Above all, we give you thanks and praise for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, and laid on him our sin, giving him over into death so we will not die eternally. Because he rose from the grave and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all those in heaven, including our faithful loved ones, we log to magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us, and given your only Son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. By his death, he has redeemed us from the bondage to sin and death, and by his resurrection, has delivered us into new life in him. Grant us to keep the breaking of the bread in sincerity and truth, faithfully eating his body given into death, and drinking his life's blood poured out for our salvation. Until we pass through death the promised land of life eternal. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. May thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. 
and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them all, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is in the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The word of our Lord be with you always.
Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you've given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood and this breaking of bread. Keep us firm in a true faith through all our days on this earth, that in on the day of his coming, we may together with all your faithful people celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which will never end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our risen Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, our God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and continue to bless you with his resurrection treasures. Amen. You may be seated as we join in praising our risen Lord. Christ the Lord is risen today. Blessed morning to you on this third Sunday of Easter as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. Next week, Sunday, April 30th, we are worshiping at Grace together uh, at 10 o'clock. So again, next week, Sunday at Grace with a joint potluck afterwards. Um, you, you're welcome to bring something for the potluck, dessert, main meal, something if you'd like to. Uh, but again, next week, we are at Grace at 10 o'clock. Uh, there it is. Call day is coming up this week, and for me, that was eight years ago uh, when I found out that I was coming here to Trinity, and now that's evolved into the Tri-Parish. Uh, but this week, I invite you to pray uh, for the candidates who are getting calls this week both, at both seminaries, um, Fort Wayne and St. Louis. Um, it's always wonderful to watch. I don't know as many guys coming through now, but I still always watch them I see where they're going to pray for them. Uh, but this week is also important because the service on Wednesday at 4 o'clock, Sean and Fiona and their baby Seamus will be finding out where they will be going on Vicarage this summer. Uh, they are planning to come up here for the first part of the summer. They won't know many other details until Wednesday when they get the call documents for Vicarage. 
And then they'll head out on vicarage sometime this summer for a year and then go back to seminary for a final year of education. And then two years from now, they'll do the, the night service where they'll find out their true placement of uh, where he'll be serving as a pastor. And so it's, it's an exciting time always down there during this week with call service. I mean, no one really wants to do any classwork anymore because you got call day coming up and finding out where you're going to serve as a vicar or as a pastor. And so pray for these guys uh, going through and their families um, in the call process. But also today, baby Seamus is being baptized today as well. So it's an exciting week for Sean and Fiona and their families as they gather to celebrate the baptism and then our call service this week. Uh, the website was up on there, but it's also the bulletin. You, you can't click on it in the bulletin. Uh, but if you go to the website directly in the bulletin, it'll take you to the call day page where it'll have the documents, the worship services. Yes, Alan? Um, for those watching online, there is a web link in the description of the video, too. Oh, oh, for this one. So if you would go to our Facebook page, there is a link to go to that page to find it. And then on there, there's a button to click for live streaming if you do want to watch it live. If not, you can go back to that page, the Concordia Seminary page, and they'll have all the calls posted later on. I think after the second service, the night service, then they'll post everything on there where everyone is going. Uh, so again, I invite you to watch it if you can. Otherwise, at least pray for these men, and we'll, we'll be sure to announce where Sean and Fiona and baby Seamus will be going for uh, vicarage. <clears throat> Feeding America is coming on Thursday at 2 o'clock. Um, Last month, we actually ran out of food. We don't know what's coming or how much is coming. It's all in Feeding America's hand. Um, there's also other food available for other people with different agencies. Um, so we're sorry that we ran out of food for those that didn't get any. Uh, we won't know until Wednesday what we're getting. Um, but again, if you would like to come help, uh, 2 o'clock or 1.30 for volunteers, if you want to come, um, we greatly appreciate it. Last thing is, uh, today we have a council meeting after fellowship over, so council members, please join us for... Uh, uh, that is, you'll be getting reports from both me and Jeff. Jeff's not here as well, so he has his printed report for you all. Um, with that, we'll pray and then uh, join us for fellowship hour as we go with God's peace. Gracious Father in heaven, we continue to celebrate the resurrection of your Son as you lift up our spirits in true hope and true joy that will never perish because your Son, our living Word, will never perish. And for that, we are most gracious and thank you as you send us forth Yes, into this perishable world, but uplifted, strengthened, comforted with all hope and joy, knowing that everything is always taken care of because you are with us always through your Son. So be with us during fellowship hour. Be with the council members today. Be with those who are receiving their calls this week. Uh, fill them with joy and knowing where they are going as you are sending them into the harvest field, both as a vicar and as a pastor, that you strengthen them and knowing that you are with them and this is your ministry, that they are going out into your kingdom, that they are proclaiming your holy word that will strengthen and be with them. As you continue to be with us and abide with us all in all things, in Jesus' name we pray as we pray to common table prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guests, and let these gifts to us be blessed. All good things unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Go in peace. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen Hallelujah.